Thank you so much, gentlemen. Now we come to the presentation session. Our, our first speaker today is Professor Peter Yu. Uh, let me give some brief introduction about Professor Yu first. Professor Yu is a pioneer in the field of fiber optics and has over 40 years of experience in the communication industry. He was the project leader for constructing the first territorial fiber optic cable linking Hong Kong and China, as well as the first international submarine fiber optic cable linking Hong Kong, Japan, and Korea. To share his industrial with the uh, younger generation, uh, Professor Yu also joined CityU. And may I now invite Professor Yu to give his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and students in the university and in the, and in the industry. Welcome to my presentation. This afternoon, I'm going to make two presentations. The first one is on submarine cable construction. And the second one is on latest technology on submarine cable system. In the, first in the first presentation, I will share with you all the key process and activity in building a submarine cable. And I will leave all the technical and technology discussion to my second presentation. I only have half an hour for each presentation. I think that I better make a quick start. First of all, I would like to sh share with you some background information about submarine cable in the region and also in Hong Kong. On the screen, you can see this is a cable map of the Asia Pacific region. No doubt you can see that uh, there's a number of cable landing in Hong Kong. And no doubt, Hong Kong is one of the telecom hub in the region. We have the uh, northern hub well, in Japan and the southern hub in Singapore. I wonder how many of you know there are how many submarine landing cable stations in Hong Kong. On the screen, you can see that there are five of them. The oldest one is in uh, deep is in Deepwater Bay. And uh, it's operated by uh, PCCW. We have the uh, Chuanquan 01 operated by PacNet, a regional uh, communication company. And the Chongham Kwok one actually operated by Singapore Telecom. And the two submarine cable in South Lantau and Tong Fo actually are adjacent to each other and they are operated by PCW and with a number of cable owners. On the screen, you can see the key component of a submarine cable. You can see that the cable actually coming up from the ocean floor up onto the continental shelf. Basically, on the continental shelf, the cable are buried under the seabed. And then the cable land at a location, what we call the beach manhole. And from the beach manhole is interconnected to the cable landing station. The section of the cable, we call it in our industry, called the fun hole. And from the uh, cable landing station, it is connected to the pond of passion or the pop. Basically, normally the pop actually is located in the business area. The cable actually, uh, link between the cables, cable station and the pop is called the back hall. And then from the pop, usually located in the business center, the cable is connected to the end user, say to the ISP and also to the, uh, well, to the corporate customer. This is a key component of a uh, submarine cable. Here I just give you an example of how a submarine cable landed in Hong Kong. You can see that uh, the submarine cable actually come from the sea, landed in deep water bay, and then uh, linked it together with the pop by ring cable, uh, what we call the ring backhaul. Why organize the cable in a, in a loop? The reason is pretty straightforward. If there's a cable break, there will be no surface interruption. On the screen, you can see there are three submarine cable that is under planning and or under construction at the present moment in time. 
all the free uh, submarine cable in the region being constructed also will land in Hong Kong. They are the SCAN, they are the SJC, they are the ASE cable. I have included this slide in your handout, so I, you can read well, you can read it in detail to well, see which particular city this cable uh, 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 will be connected. Before I move on, I just want to highlight a single point. A very important point is that, that all this cable are at working at 40 G, 40 gigabit per second. Here, I'll well, show the company that participate in the construction of this cable. On the screen, you can see that there are two types of cable. One is the pirate cable, and the other is the consortium cable. The pirate cable means, well, the cable actually built by private investor. And the consortium cable means that the cable is actually constructed by a group of uh, user, major, major telecom operator, and some of the uh, major users, well, say for example, Google. And you may, wa you may wonder why there are two consortium cables. The reason is pretty straightforward, because of competition. In Japan, KDDI never worked with uh, NTT. In the uh, Philippines, well, group, uh, group Telecom never worked with uh, PLDT. And in Singapore, Singapore Telecom never worked with uh, StarHub because they are competitors. So they are normally uh, uh, two consortium cables. I would, I would make use of this example, the construction of this particular cable, uh, to illustrate the process and activity involved in building well, a submarine cable. But I need to uh, beg your pardon because I cannot well, go to too specific, give you too specific information because I'm bound by NDA, well, the non-disclosure agreement. In building a submarine cable, normally we, we encounter three categories of challenges. First one is the uh, physical challenge, the second one is the political challenge, and the third one is the technical challenge. And this sort of challenge or this sort of risk needs to be mitigated or need to be overcome during the different phases of our project building or cable building. There, on the screen, there are three key stages in building a submarine cable. At the uh, feasibility and desktop study stage, we manage the physical challenge. In the license and permit application stage, we manage the political challenge. And also in the project implementation phase, we manage the technical challenge. And you can see that we, uh, for the project implementation, we can divide it, further divide it into three phases. The marine survey, the system design and prime manufacture, land and submarine installation. On the screen, this is a detailed step of uh, in building a submarine cable. I have no intention to read it full line by line. Um, I have included it in the handout, so you can, I don't want to overload you with all the details. Uh, so such that you lost sight of the overall picture, but uh, this form a useful material for your future reference. Now, let's quickly move into the first phase of, uh, uh, of the uh, cable construction, the feasibility and desktop study. For this, uh, uh, at this particular phase, we need to employ a specialized uh, surveyor to conduct a study for us. And the main purpose of this particular uh, the theoretical study is come up with a sort of theoretical preliminary cable route where to lay the cable. As I said, uh, as I told you before, in building a, a submarine cable, we need to overcome a number of physical risks. Those are the 10 uh, physical risks that need, we need to overcome or we need to mitigate in the process. Uh, well, we have the volcano, earthquake, steep loop, and also the slide loop, and also the sea mountain, this means the sea mountain, abrasive seabed, 
fishing ground anchoring area, cable crossing and pipeline crossing, oil, oil and gas exploration block, sea land crossing, military zone and minefield, and also we have the privacy. As I told you before, the main objective of the um, theoretical study is come up with a sort of uh, preliminary uh, cable route. The objective is very simple. Try to lay the cable on a smooth flat seabed away from all the physical risk. Uh, uh, risk. That is the uh, objective. But <laughs> easy said than done. We need to actually, uh, how to achieve the about? We need to have some sort of uh, theoretical research and study into various data, uh, database, and then actually send a survey ship out to actually uh, do the survey. Again, I've, I've, it's not my intention to read through it line by line, include it in your handout for your future reference. Uh, this is a detailed step uh, of uh, the cable round survey or cable route survey. Basically, the objective is pretty straightforward. Try to lay it on the flat surface and uh, try to avoid all those flat. It's um, a typical uh, seabed profile. Don't, don't think that the seabed is a, is a, a piece of uh, flat surfaces. It's the, uh, well, we need to study the, the seabed profile. You can see that uh, they have the, uh, under the sea, we have the uh, sea mountain, sea valley, sea train, so on and so forth. It's not a, a, a uh, a piece of uh, flat surfaces. We also need to study the topo topographic and also the physiographic well, features of the seabed. Basically on the screen you can see the continental shelf here and also the deep region area. And this will determine whether what type of cable we are going to use in those areas, whether you use the lightweight cable or you use the armor cable. And also it determines where to bury your cable and to what particular depth. You, we also need to study the tectonic wild plate. The reason is pretty straightforward. If there's an earthquake, if you lay the cable along the edge of the tectonic plate, a long length of cable will be buried. We need to study uh, 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 the location of the volcano in the region. The earthquake, well, unfortunately uh, in, in Indonesia, there's a lot of earthquake well, uh, uh, happen every year. The statistic of the uh, earthquake and, uh, and the impact. <laughs> Although our well, piracy problem is not as bad as in Somalia, but we still have a piracy in the South China Sea. We also study the um, thought history of uh, different uh, of the uh, of the submarine cable. Well, how many cables are damaged by the anchor, by, by the industry, by the seismic effect, seismic effect, so on and so forth. We also need to study the uh, cable force statistic, and we find that um, fishing and anchoring is one of the uh, greatest physical risk well, to the cable security. And we also find that cable burial is one of the most effective and economic way to protect the cable. On top of that, we also need to study about well, the uh, cable route in approaching Hong Kong, trying to avoid all the forbidden zones and also the physical uh, and number of threats. Well, you can see that near Hong Kong, there is some sort of forbidden zone by the uh, Chinese Navy that we cannot lay the cable in. We need to talk to them, negotiate well, where, to, uh, where to go. And also you can see that there's a lot of uh, oil block uh, area that has been contracted out by the government for the uh, company to do their oil exploration. And they will move their uh, 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 the exploration platform around. So how, how do you lay your cable across them? On top of that, well, we also need to study the uh, cable route in relationship with the existing cable. You see that a number of cable come in. You need to keep a appropriate distance, at least two water depth from other cable for future repair. If otherwise, if there's something wrong with your uh, cable, you will pick up the wrong cable and then you will run into a lot of uh, problem, financial problem, because the other cable owner will sue you. 
and it could be very expensive. And if you need to cross other cable, you need to call it at a steep angle, more than uh, 45 degree. Similar thing happened uh, in uh, Singapore. In, uh, in Indonesia, well, we have another more threat. We got the mine area. Some of the bomb actually remain, still remain from the Second World War, still remain in that particular. We need to, we need to avoid or uh, we need to avoid those area or try to do something about it. Well, we need to employ the Indonesian Navy to broaden the uh, corridor. So. Again, actually, Malacca Strait is one of the most busiest wow, uh, shipping lane on Earth. <coughs> How to lay the cable wow, uh, 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 on the uh, busiest wow, uh, shipping lane. We try to avoid the lane, but we cannot. So we need to cross the lane, the shipping lane, at a very steep angle. It should be more than 45 degrees. I hope that by now you have some appreciation of the complexity, wow, uh, uh, the complication involved uh, in, uh, in the cable route design. Uh, you need to uh, try to negotiate or try to avoid getting into the oil or gas uh, exploration block. And during the theoretical study, we will come up with a sort of cable protection strategy. And we normally, the, in the, uh, the industry actually follow uh, an international uh, body called the International Cable Protection Committee. They will come up with some sort of recommendation or some sort of uh, procedure or guideline of, of how to do the cable pro uh, protection. You can see that um, for, for our specific project, well, we will use the um, lightweight cable for the deep water and also single armor cable when, we, when the cable are posed or when the cable is on the continental shelf. Where to bury the cable, how deep, and uh, how to do the protection, it could be covered under the uh, theoretical or uh, theoretical desktop study. That is the outcome of this uh, uh, the desktop study. Normally, you will come up with a sort of route position needs. Where to lay your cable is a preliminary one. Come up with all the uh, protection strategy and also uh, some of the protection uh, 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 requirement. In causing the um, oil, oil pipe or gas pipe, basically, we need to build a bridge, a metal bridge across, and lay your cable on top of it. Easy said than done, and you, you know that. It is a very expensive uh, operation. After we have the preliminary cable route is, uh, uh, design, now we move into the most difficult part. Although it's not technical, but it's the most difficult and most challenging part. Again, we need to employ special agents to handle your job, particularly in the relationship management with different government. Uh, I hope that you understand what is the meaning of relationship management, particularly in China, in Vietnam. <laughs> and actually, a, a, a recent project actually has been significantly delayed uh, uh, by the, uh, by the uh, permit uh, application. In our project, in our specific example, well, we need to manage the political challenge. We run into the territorial dispute in the South China Sea. And also, our well, negotiation with, uh, well, you need to negotiate more than 66, uh, 64 agreement in causing a different cable, different pipeline, different uh, concession block. In the management of the political challenge, well, we need to understand the interpretation of every stage, how they in interpret well, the law of sea. China interpret the law of sea is totally different from Japan or from Vietnam. The regulation of the use of a foreign ship in doing the survey and also the, uh, 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 and also the installation. Tax regulation. When you lay the cable across their, ter uh, their water, they will ask you for tax. Expect compensation from the fishermen. Here I, 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 show, I just tell you, try to illustrate the complexity of the uh, territorial this bill. That is what China claimed. That is what Philippine government claimed. They don't call it the South China Sea, they call it the West Philippine Sea. When they file in your application, well, you better use the right terminology. Otherwise, it will be kicked out at the first instant. This is what the Vietnam government claimed. 
That is what the uh, Indonesian government claim, and this is uh, what the Malaysian claim, and then uh, this is what the uh, Brunei government claim. Here, I just want to illustrate the complexity, <laughs> the difficulty, or the challenge, the political challenge involved. Even in Hong Kong, actually, for laying a cable, you need to go full, you need to have 15 more licenses. Well, you need to get the license from OFTA, Marine Department, Environmental Protection Department, well, the District Land Office, blah, 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 blah. In, in Indonesia, well, 22 licenses, a lot of money. <laughs> in China, eight, also a lot of money. Vietnam, also a lot of money, 10. So I hope by now you see the, it's not only the technical, it's a political thing that we need to manage. After the um, preliminary uh, cable route design, the permit, now we go to the actual uh, implementation of well, the uh, marine survey. Again, actually, we need to be done by a special well, uh, agent to do it, or special surveyor to conduct the survey for us. Different type of, different category of uh, route survey. Actually, well, you have the land side survey, diver stream survey. You need actually send a diver actually to look at the seabed. The in-source survey, shallow water survey, uh, deep water survey, and also the uh, burial assessment. This is a photo of a typical survey ship. In the uh, wood survey, basically we uh, collect four types of uh, data. The first type is the bathymetric data. It collected by the echo sounder, boom, Boom, boom. Actually, basically, it's trying to measure the water depth. And also, the second one is the uh, seabed imagery uh, data. Basically, take a, uh, using the toed side scan sonar to do the uh, image of the seabed. We also, by the same technique, well, we can also tell the, uh, whether the sea bottom is soft surface or the sur uh, uh, or the surface is hard, whether it's a hard surface or whether it's the soft surface. And also, basically, we ne also need to have a burial assess, basically taking a sample of the soil on the seabed. Basically, it's the uh, usual practice is we take the soil sample every 20 kilometers apart. Just show you the, uh, a photo of the uh, bathymetric uh, image. They collect by the uh, echo sound, the bang, bang, bang. That is the image. And you can see the, uh, 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 the submarine cable. Another view of the submarine cable. And uh, another view actually seeing a very deep train actually well, in the Philippine Sea, up more than 10,000 kilometers in depth, pretty deep. We need to avoid those areas. And also the side scan sonar image, you can see the sunken ship there. And then uh, from the image, we can tell whether the, su uh, the surface is hard or not. Usually, we look for the soft surface to lay our cable. No time to uh, get into the details of the um, marine survey. I don't want to read it uh, line by line. Basically, it's just a confirmation of uh, what the uh, theoretical study or the uh, preliminary uh, cable route is feasible or not. I better move on fast because I don't want to overrun well, that much. Uh, I, I will try to touch on well, the system design and the link budgeting, but uh, I, would, I would very much like to, uh, to leave uh, all the technical and the uh, technology part uh, to my second presentation. This is a diagram, a typical diagram of a, uh, the typical equipment in a cable system. Well, the uh, cable while coming up, up from, the, uh, uh, from the ocean, uh, get into the cable station, uh, get inside the uh, cable termination box, go through the uh, submarine line terminal equipment, and then uh, they have the uh, supervisory equipment, the uh, power feeding equipment, pretty uh, straightforward. Well, uh, for the student in the university, well, it's well documented in a number, uh, most of the uh, submarine cable uh, textbook. No time to uh, go. In the cable, uh, in the system design, normally we will uh, specify, or we will define four category of specification. We will define the uh, system speed. Well, we will, we will cover uh, the technical part a little bit but in my second presentation. Um, that, that, will be, that will have an impact on the choice of technology, the availability requirement, 
uh, that will be uh, that that will have an impact on the design of the cable redundancy, whether it's uh, one plus one or n plus one. You need to specify the number of uh, expected uh, cable ship repair that uh, actually have an impact of the level of the wet pine protection, whether you build a bridge over the uh, 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 wet pine or not, and the depth and the extent of the cable burial. And also the uh, specify the uh, power feeding uh, reconfiguration uh, capability. That is an impact that try to minimize the surface uh, interruption in case of uh, cable break. This is a typical power feeding uh, arrangement. There are two types of uh, feeding. One is the uh, double end. This means uh, we feed power to the repeater from both stations or the single end feed. This is what I mean by the uh, power feeding reconfiguration uh, capability. This is a normal situation. If there is a cable break at one particular section, we can actually reconfigure the uh, power feeding so that we can isolate out the 40 uh, uh, section and then uh, keep the other section while still in surface. That is also important when you design the uh, cable system. Here come a typical Q budget table for the uh, uh, summary section. Well documented in a number of uh, textbooks and also in the ITU documentation. No time to uh, read through it line by line. If we follow, usually follow the G977 uh, format. Just want to highlight a few uh, 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 features of it. There are, you can see that there are two columns. It's uh, what we call the begin beginning of life and the end of life because the submarine cable, normally the, the, the design life is 25 years. So they will allow for the cable repair and the uh, component aging. And also, uh, they will consider all the um, transmission impairments. And also, uh, the characteristic of the equipment. And also, the, uh, the effect of the FEC. FEC is a very powerful uh, uh, technology. Forward error correction. And we will cover that uh, in a little bit detail uh, in my second presentation. This is a typical straight line diagram for the whole system. Uh, the number of repeaters, uh, the number of equalizers, so on and so forth, actually uh, pretty straightforward. Now we move to the final phase, actually, of the uh, project implementation. I skipped the land part, the land installation, nothing, uh, 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 nothing special about it. So I go to the marine installation. Again, we need to employ specialized well, cable ship operator to carry out the installation for us. Here are the key process in the marine installation well, operation. Also pretty straightforward. First of all, we need to assemble all the uh, cable uh, uh, repeater uh, 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 on board of the cable ship. And then before laying the uh, cable, we clear all the rubbers along the cable route, called the uh, route clearance. And then uh, we lay the cable and bury the cable, and then uh, we bring the cable to the, uh, 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 to the saw end. And then after that, usually we will send a remote control vehicle or remote, basically it's a remote control submarine down into the uh, seabed to have the inspection. And if, it, if the job is not properly done, it will be bury the cable again. This is uh, the way they, they, they try to do the, um, the clear, the rubbish, again, uh, uh, along all the plain the cable route by a sort of uh, grab nail anchor. Uh, the, there are photos of the grab nail anchor at the bottom. By an anchor, they draw it along the uh, proposed or planned it while cable route to clear all the rubbish and all the fishing, fishing gear. Then they do the uh, cable lay operation Sometimes you can do the cable lay and the burial uh, operation at the same time by a equipment or a, a tool called a plow, something like a plow that the farmer used in the rice field. It's a pretty compli uh, complicated, sophisticated operation. It's a computerized control. The, uh, it, you need to precisely control the speed, the power, the direction of the ship, the snag of the cable, against uh, the changing current, the weight of the current, and the condition of the seabed. And there are three type of burial operation. Well, burial by power, which I have just said, up to a, up to a depth of 1.5 meter. 
Bear road by strong water jet up to three meter. Bear road by trenching, usually at the uh, shore end. It need to go to 12 meter in depth. And uh, we need to use it in uh, Singapore and also in Hong Kong because of a lot of uh, ca uh, big uh, cable, uh, cargo ship uh, uh, in the region. So we need to deep bury a certain section of the cable. This is a photograph, this is some photo of the prow you got for different, uh, for different burial depth and also different type of seabed. And this is a, a picture or a photo of a remote control submarine or remote control vehicle. We actually sent this thing down actually to, the, uh, to inspect about the seabed condition. Uh, that is burial by strong water jack, usually for the knee end or uh, sea installation. Uh, that is burial by trenching. Uh, you need to take uh, uh, a, a, a deep train and then you lay the cable in it. This is uh, another uh, photo of the uh, remote control submarine that we sent down to the seabed to inspect and to do the uh, what uh, cable burial if required. And this is a photo of the, the real photo of a uh, cable link barge in the near water when we lay the cable on the, uh, on the deep uh, uh, cable train. This is a typical uh, uh, cable ship. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now here come to the end of my first presentation. I hope that by now you have a appreciation of all the activity and process involved in the building the uh, a submarine cable system. And I, I also hope that uh, you find my presentation well, useful and not too boring. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.